My dudes, welcome back. Today we're going to do a review on this, the Bushnell TRS-25. I've been meaning to do this review for quite a while. I posted a picture on Patreon uh, of this in a not so good state. And uh, I mentioned over there that I was going to do a review. And I'm finally getting to it now, some months later, because I completely forgot. This is probably the best low budget red dot you can buy. A friend of mine, Michael, bought this for $120 at the local gun shop. He put it on many different rifles, including a 308 Lithgow LA-102. It lived on there for quite a while. He swapped and changed that rifle a lot. So one day it would have a scope, one day it would have a red dot. Then it would have a different scope, then it would go back to the red dot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He eventually found an A point, I think it was a micro two, something like that. Anyway, he found that on um, on a website, second hand. So he bought it, and then I bought this off him for a hundred bucks. I then had it on my throw away for quite a while. Um, and I also had it on a 7615, and I also had it on my Adler B220. I then lent it to my mate Pete, and he put it on a Marlin 336 3030, and it lived on there for probably a year, I guess, before he gave it back. He shot a lot with it. I got it back, and then I put it back onto my Adler, but onto my rifled barrel to do some testing, and that's when I eventually broke the red dot. Now, before we talk about the break in the red dot and my actual opinion of this red dot, let's talk through some specs. It's a closed reflex style, which means that, well, it's not an open reflex, is it? We've got about 70 MOA of adjustment. It's a red dot, obviously. It's a 20 mil objective lens through the front there. Now, a lot of red dots, um, particularly these days, more and more red dots are coming out with a bigger objective lens. Um, and that just means it, it's easier to not occlude your target with the housing of the reflex or the housing of the of the sight itself. Now we'll we'll circle back into that point a little bit later, but in short, uh, sometimes the amount of crap around this can occlude your target a bit, even when shooting two eye open. Its minimum parallax distance is 50 yards, so that's about what 43 meters or so, 42 meters, something like that. Um, it has 11 brightness settings. It goes all the way up to 11. Um, it's a three MOA dot, so it's not too small. It's not too big. Um, I feel like it's the bit of the Goldilocks size. Three MOA for red dots, pretty good. It's waterproof, fully submersible. It weighs four ounces, which is about 100 grams, I think. Uh, it's got an inbuilt Picatinny rail on the bottom, which is pretty good. Um, the only thing that I don't particularly like about that Picatinny rail is the bolt that goes across is round and not square, which means that if you do take it off and put it back on, you run the risk of not being able to get it to completely return to zero, whereas some brands, when they make that, is a milled uh, square slot or square bar. Um, it does mean that you can return to zero a little bit easier. It has 40 MOA of adjustment per revolution on the turrets. The turrets are capped and sealed with a little O-ring. Um, pretty easy to adjust. They're one MOA clicks um, which is a bit of a coarse adjustment, but overall it's not too bad. You get 5,000 hours of battery life, but you do not have an auto shut off, and it takes a normal CR 2032 battery. The things I didn't like about this was, as I touched on briefly before, because of where the battery compartment is, um, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass and just sort of get in the way of looking at things. Now, if you do shoot two eye open like you're supposed to, it's not really much of a drama because it sort of just blurs away anyway. However, yeah, I just would like the housing to be a little bit smaller. The battery life is a bit poo, particularly if you forget and leave it on because it doesn't have that auto shut off. I had to replace a fair few batteries in this just purely because I'd you know, leave it on accidentally. You'd take it out of the safe, you go hunting, you turn it on, you forget, you leave it on, you put it back in the safe, you pull it back out, you take it back out hunting again, you don't have a red dot. Um, so that is a bit of a pain in the ass, and I did find that to be a drama. That's more on me as the user, and not so much on the red dot itself. However, a lot of red dots these days do have an auto shut off for that reason. That's about it for the things I don't like about this, which is rare for a review, because normally I'm shitting on things. It's robust, it's rugged, it's waterproof, it's fog proof, it's drop proof. I've had this on a lot of heavy recoiling guns, 
heavy recoiling. I've had it on 308s. Some of you people think that's heavy recoiling. We'll leave it at that. And it stood up to a lot of abuse. Now, a lot of people just use these for 22s. A lot of the Yanks put these on 1022s. You look at all the, the, the photos and stuff, it, um, it always shows them with 1022s. Now, that's not to say that you can't use them on heavy recoiling things, because you can. You just run the risk of breaking it, like I did. So what, when I put it onto the shotgun, what actually happened was the glue that holds the front lens failed and the lens actually walked its way out the front of the sight. I'll throw a photo up now for you to look at. Now, I only realized this when I was firing and I'd already zeroed the, uh, the sight to, the, to that rifle barrel and I was firing and then my point of impact kept on shifting. So it would shift, then I'd make an aim off correction and I'd fire and that point of impact would shift again. I was like, what the bloody hell is going on? I fired probably 10 shells. Now I'm firing um, a 7 8 ounce slug out of this, mind you, with 30 grains of powder. It's fair hoofing, it was doing about 1600 feet per second. So it's a lot of recoil, a lot of bang. And after about 10 shells of this, I realized that's when I, I saw the, the front of the lens popping out. Now the good thing was, I just pushed the lens back in and it completely returned to zero. So I think that is absolutely awesome. Now, if you understand how red dot works, you understand why they return to zero. It's an emitter, so it emits a light onto that front lens. So if the front lens moves, it's gonna move your point of aim, point of impact. You put it back to where it started, obviously it's gonna to return to the original point of impact. Now, this still works. I've put this back onto 22s and it's still perfectly fine. Would I put it back on a heavy recoiling gun like a centerfire or a shotgun? Probably not but it's pretty good for something I spent $100 on second hand and it can still sit on a 22, so that's pretty good. So I will not be getting rid of this anytime soon. Would I buy another one? Probably. I do have a rifle that I want to set up for, um, for a red dot. It's a 3006. So potentially, on the list of things to buy for that rifle, a list of red dots to look at, the uh, Bushnell TRS-25 will be on that list. So will all the aim points and you know all the other ones, but um, that's definitely hitting the short list. So I hope you got something out of the review. I hope that was informative to you. If you have a Bushnell Terrace 25, drop a comment below and let me know what you think of it. I think it's pretty bloody good, particularly at the price point. If you're looking for red dot, have a go at one of these. Anyway, catch you next video and hooroo.